Are you ready to think big and act bold? Then you are in the right place. This is Innovative Entrepreneurs, a podcast that will bring you the stories, insights, and tips from some of the most successful and innovative entrepreneurs in the world. I am your host, Erica Bailey, and I am here to help you start, scale, and sustain your own entrepreneurial journey. Let's get started. Hello, and welcome to Innovative Entrepreneurs. I am your host, Erica Bailey, and uh, you're supposed to say we have an exciting episode. To be honest with you, it's been taking me a little while to actually do my own again. I think I've lacked the confidence all of a sudden. And I've talked about confidence and the difference between confidence and self-esteem before. I have been ex- feeling like a lack of confidence. I wasn't sure, right, if these podcasts matter. Are people listening? Am I making sense? Am I making a difference? I mean, am I making a difference is like the number one reason that I'm doing this. You know, I'm thinking, am I doing it right? Am I supposed to be dressed up? Am I supposed to be so prepared? I really was doubting my ability to do this by myself. I have no problem talking to other people, but talking to myself right now, I mean, I know there's people out there listening, but I feel like I'm talking to myself. This is hard. So I just wasn't doing it. I was procrastinating and procrastinating. So I'm sorry, Mark. And you can keep that in. Mark is my podcast director. He is amazing. (laughs) He does all the hard work. Uh, I just have to sit here and talk. So I'll do my best, but I decided today, actually, when I was looking for clothes, I found this shirt, Do Better, okay? This is a line by a friend of mine. Her name is Tiffany. She's here in um, Evanston. So I'm going to have Mark also drop the link to her clothing line because the message behind Do Better is very powerful. Um, and this showed me something, right? So I'm like, okay. All right, I need I need to do better. I need to five, four, three, two, one, and rip off the band aid and you know do my podcast because Mark needs me too, and this is you know this is my thing now. So I'm gonna have to say thanks to Tiff for putting this in my closet when I needed it most, although it's been there forever. Um, we can all do better. So that's what I'm I'm trying to do right now. I am doing better at. I'm in confidence in myself and that, you know what, if nobody's listening, oh, well, (laughs) oh, well, I like doing this. And so I'm just going to continue doing it anyway. So I have a couple topics that I wanted to talk about and I'm struggling. I've been going through these papers and I'm like, and I can't tell if I want to talk about business plans or the story of social media. So raise your hand, which one you want? That's not happening. <laughs> um, and you know what? Another thing that's been bothering me is like, I try so hard to be, you know, right in the camera and reading because I don't, you know, want to mess things up. But, you know, I have notes. This is how we grow and learn. So I think today we're going to talk about what I feel is the most important part of a business in order for it to grow. Um, and so we're going to talk about a business. My degree is actually in it's an mba um in organizational behavior um my thesis was on healthy workplaces um, make healthy people making employment feel good yeah so that's kind of where i started okay so business plans uh think of it like a roadmap right a business plan is your identity right it's it's where you want to go, it's your benchmarks, it's it's creating the story of your future, right? That's how I look at it. It helps you solve problems in advance, right? It makes you understand who is your competition and what they're really doing. You know, obviously there's a lot of logistics and um, kind of analysis and uh, market analysis marketing plan, which I'll get to in another one, you know, and this is where you're, you really line out your goals. Um, you know, where do you want to be? And every business, whether, you know, you're a two, two-person company or you have 50,000 employees, you, 
a business plan is vital. It it really is. It helps you see where you want to go, and then it literally helps you along the way to get there. You're not getting off course. Things change, right? And then you have to adjust, but you adjust that within your plan. This keeps things going smoothly, uh, so you're not hopping all over the place, um, not even achieving the benchmarks or goals that you have set. So, um, you know, a business plan here are, I think this came from Chase, actually. I thought it was interesting. You know, what is the purpose of a business plan? So they give me nine topics here. So to prove your idea is viable, well, that's, you know, makes sense. Um, when you write a business plan, you can assess whether your company will be successful. Understanding market dynamics as well as competitors will help determine if your idea is viable. All right, so... Before you go to market, you need to make sure that the market needs what you have, right? And so you have to do a lot of analysis before you launch. Um, doesn't mean, you know, if you have a competitive analysis that says, ah, stay away. And you want to, you want to go forward, go forward. You, you could, you know, change the world. So do what you want to do, no matter what. But it really does help you kind of identify, you know, will this work? And will this work in the market? Which market should I be looking into? Who is my primary audience? This is where you can develop financial projections for your business, like estimated startup costs, profit and loss forecast, a break-even analysis, and also, a you know, an out strategy, right? And those are a lot of big words, right? So you need to know as a new business, what are your startup costs? Like for us, when we started, uh, we needed computers with high powers. We needed, you know, phones for work. We needed um, some tools, right? Some tools that we use to help with social media, education. Um, you know, those were all startup costs because we wanted to make sure we knew what we were doing. But you know, a startup costs can be anything. It can be buying the you know, the ingredients that you need. It can be how many people do you need to hire in order to achieve the goals or benchmarks you have set out. So this really identifies like, what do you have to pay for up front? And then you need to understand, you know, how is this financially going to flow? What is the price of your product? Um, you know, what value is it bringing? But you need to understand the financial forecast. Now, this is not where I excel, right? Um, I pay people for that because I don't completely understand how to build that, but I understand the value. Um, you know, I understand if I have a product and I, you know, I have a hundred thousand dollars in startup costs, I need to understand how many of those products I need to sell in order to break even with the original startup costs. Right. So that's kind of your, uh, break even analysis. So, you know, it helps you uh, identify the viability of your idea. For example, if you have a product that is X amount of dollars and you spent $100,000 on your startup, how many X amount of dollar products do you need to sell in order to break even? That's your break even analysis so that, that you know what it's going to take in order to recoup your original startup costs. And then you have probably business costs after that as you, you know, continue to employ and grow. And so you need to understand also what your profit margin is, right? Um, are you going to make enough from your product in order to make a profit um, and have a viable business? So that is not easy. You definitely need to work with somebody unless you are like a financial guru but I needed to talk to somebody. I needed to understand this better. So obviously, we've got it going um, thanks to the people in my tribe who helped me understand it. When you have this like business plan, it proves to initial parties, so like potential investors, customers, employees, partners, and yourself, um, it proves that you are serious about your business. So when you have this thought out, and written out and clearly identified a roadmap that you follow. It proves that you really are dedicated to the ultimate goal 
um, you know, what is that three year, five year, 10 year plan? You know, what are you trying to accomplish? So that's prove your idea is viable. Now, number two here is set important goals. Well, you have to set benchmarks. You have to set where you want to be, right? What are your goals? Your 90 day, year, five year, 10 year plan. But this isn't only for the business. This is also for you. It helps you see where you want to go, right? I suggest creating both a short and long-term plan because you got to start somewhere. And sometimes when you create this grandiose plan, uh, it can get a little intimidating. So I suggest starting with this like short-term, a little more personal, I guess, uh, direction uh, this plan. So that's what I would suggest. Um, but you know, set those goals, milestones, benchmarks. That way, A, when you reach them, you know that you are achieving and moving forward. And B, when you reach them, it feels good. Hey, it feels good to reach that milestone, you know, personal and professional. The most common reasons businesses fail is that they don't implement a contingency plan, lack of capital. Okay. As small businesses, especially small business owners, that is a challenge. Lack of market impact or need. Okay. So you bring a product to market without doing proper research and people don't want it. And so it bobs. Okay. That does happen. Um, so research, 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 business plan, explosive growth that drains all your capital. We all want to grow. Absolutely. But if you grow too fast, it can absolutely cause your business to to crumble. You have to grow at a pace that you are able to financially afford and honestly provide quality service. And stiff competition. Well, yeah. I mean, if you're going up against some of the big guys, right? Um, you you have a you have some big shoes to fill. So those are what they say are the are the risks that are the most common reasons businesses fail. It all goes back to research. Research. All right, number five, a lot of resources and plan purchases. All right, you'll have investments such as product and service development, technology, hiring, gives you an idea of how much you need to spend on resources and ensures your business will manage those resources effectively. All right, so the business plan says, I need this. And in order to get this, I will have to do this. It's it's literally thinking through every possible problem and coming up with a solution on how you can make that better. A good business plan can also determine when it's feasible to expand to a larger store or workplace. Okay, so again, like the client I was talking to you about, um, he knows that in order to hire in a person, he has to add X number of sales. So it's the same thing. If I need to grow into a larger workspace or um, I need to hire new people, it helps me know, okay, in order to do that, I have to reach this be- benchmark. Going back to that strategic plan, your benchmarks, your goals. Number six, build your team. So sharing a business plan helps the larger team work collectively in the same direction. So, I mean, that makes sense, right? You have a business plan, you have multiple people on your team. Everybody needs to know what the plan is so that everybody around that King Arthur's table knows how to get there. I mean, it's clear. It's clearly identified. It's written down. There's no questions. And develop a marketing strategy. Send it right there. We will go into a marketing strategy in another podcast. So focus your energy. I'm going to skip to that. A business plan determines which areas of your business to focus on while also avoiding possible distractions. It provides a roadmap for critical trade-offs and resource allocation. As a business owner, you will feel the urge to solve all of your internal and customers' problems, but it is important to maintain focus. You need to keep your priorities at the top of your mind as you set off to build your company. I say focus your energy and I see a goal. I have a vision. I know exactly where I want to be and I need to put my energy towards that positive direction and ultimately, you know, what I want to achieve. 
because it's already out there. You know, what I want is already out there. I just have to catch up to it, right? So I need to focus or focus your energy on your goal and just put positive, um, you know, energy towards that. Uh, you know, they're going to be hard days, right? They're going to be great days. So you just need to continue to focus your energy on the path that you're trying to achieve and you, then you're not scattered, right? You have a plan. You know, I need to focus my energy this month on creating 15 podcasts. That is my goal. Um, and so that is where, again, my energy is going to be focused with a positive mindset. So anyway, that is what I have for you today. Honestly, you can literally search just how to write a business plan or templates for business plans. There's a lot of stuff out there that will guide you and help you. You know, of course, I'm a consultant. I am happy to help you write your business plan. Really, you just, you know, start with Google. <laughs> Here's the key. No matter what size business you are, write your business plan. It can be three pages. It can be 90 pages. Write your plan out. Make benchmarks and when you reach them allow yourself to feel good and then make another benchmark anyway thank you for uh hanging out with me today i needed to do better i feel like i so i am going to give myself a pat on the back you should too we all should do better but we're trying you know if we can improve one percent every day we will improve 365% by the end of the year. Jason said that. Sometimes he can be smart. Well, that is all for today. My name is Erica Bailey, and I am your host for Innovative Entrepreneurs. If I brought you value or you think that somebody else might get value from what I have to say, share it. You know, that's how this whole thing works. Talk to you later. Appreciate your time. If you want more of this goodness, make sure you subscribe so that you get notifications for future podcasts. And if you found value from this, please share it with others. You can visit our website at cwgdigital.com. This is Erica Bailey. I am your host, and I will see you next time.